I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter number 24 for a minute. Luke chapter number 24, this is on page 1111, 1111 in the old Schofield Bible. Uh, Luke chapter number 24, verse number 4. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. I want to talk about the, the two men that stood by them to start off with. Now, there are questions concerning the bodies of angels, as we mentioned a little bit about it this morning. What kind of bodies do angels have? What do angels look like? All kinds of questions come to us, and but nobody knows exactly these things. Now, there are many ideas and speculations about it. What does the Bible say? Now, they are spirits. We know that because Jesus said so. The spirits now, and they're called into existence by an immediate act of creation. God made them. God created all the angels. They appeared uh, in bodily form to men at will, and then they suddenly disappeared the same way. They appeared in white raiment, white as snow, with light and glory, and uh, the glory that was in them, different manifestations. The nature of angels' body is unknown for uh, the uh, mind, the, the finite mind cannot figure all of this out. It's not revealed fully uh, to you and me. But we believe in angels because the Bible declares so. Now, where do they dwell? All of the angels, they've got to be dwelling somewhere. The number of angels is so great that many cannot, nobody can count them. There's so many you cannot really count the angels. The unseen world of angels is a mighty kingdom in which there are thrones, principalities, powers, and dominions. Now, since these beings are really real, they have to have a dwelling place. Angels are called the angels of heaven. Now, heaven is a tremendous term of vast meaning. Nobody can fathom the fullness of heaven. We know that the Bible tells us enough about heaven to make us want to, know, want to go there. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going there. I mean, you don't understand all about heaven. I, I've never seen heaven. I don't know what all is there. But hey, I want to go. And, and by the grace of God, I can go. I am going. And that's the de declaration of God's holy word. Now, the Bible speaks of three heavens. The stratospheric heavens, the starry heavens, and the third heaven. Now, the third heaven is the heaven of heavens, the dwelling place of God's eternal throne. In 2 Corinthians 12, 3, I cannot tell, God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Now, we know two things right here, factual, that there is a heaven, and heaven is the same as paradise. Jesus, y'all just sang about it. Jesus said to that thief on the cross, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The Bible tells us Jesus ascended back to heaven from whence he came. And so Jesus is in heaven. Paradise is in heaven. And brother, that thief is in heaven. And every child of God is in heaven that has died. In the faith, we, we are going there. And it's going to be a great reunion someday. Now, the earthly tabernacle was possessed by earthly people. This tabernacle was a pattern of the heavens. God showed Moses these things. In Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5, the Bible says, Who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Now, the earthly tabernacle had three compartments, the outer court, the holy of place, and the holy of holies. The outer court represents the heaven surrounding the earth. The holy place represents the immense universe. 
And the Holy of Holies represents the third heaven where God dwells. Now, the high priest entered this earthly place of worship by passing through the outer court, the holy place, and then into the Holy of Holies to present the blood in Jehovah's holy presence. And he had to have the blood, and that was all, all that was done in the tabernacle as a picture of what Jesus Christ would do by saving your and my soul. Now, the earthly high priest was only a type, only a type of Jesus Christ, who is our great high priest and our great eternal high priest. The Lord Jesus is right now um, uh, doing for you and me. I mean, He knows you're here. He knows you're His child. He knows you're washed in the blood. He knows everything about us, and He's going to keep us because He can't die ever again. He's alive forevermore. And as we said in a previous sermon, those high priests, you know, they stood all the time administering their duty, carrying out their ministry. They stood all the time. But when Jesus died and was buried and went to heaven, He sat down. And that sitting down means that He finished it. Once and for all, it's taken care of. Your redemption and mine's bought and paid for. Every father of our sins are gone. Y'all, boy, y'all were on it tonight. Singing, he, 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 he cast my sins away from me as far as the east is from the west. Never to remember them against me anymore. I'm telling you, I get excited when I think my sins are gone. When I realize that, praise God, the devil never will be able to get me again. But Brother Sammy, you may slip. I slip all the time. You may make a mistake. I make a mistake all the time. I'm one big mistake, but I'm saved by the grace of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. When the devil tells you, give it up, don't do it. When the devil tells you, oh, you can't live perfectly, you might as well not try, don't listen to him. Don't listen to any voice but the voice of God. Stay in the Scriptures because we're not going to give up on our profession. We're going to hold fast our profession. Not that we've got to hold our own salvation in so we'll make it in. We're going to make it in. We're already as good as in by the grace of God. And then in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. Now listen to this now. Which are the figures of the truth. But into heaven itself, <coughs> our high priest has entered heaven itself. The Bible says, why now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But I like this, but now once, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And then he says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. When he comes back the next time, he's not going to come to die for sin. Brother, sin's taken care of. And so you and I have something great to look forward to now. We can go to bed tonight, shout the victory. We can get up in the morning, shout the victory. We can say, I'm God's child and nothing can change it. Satan won't ever be able to get me again. And the devil can roar like a lion, and he does, uh, but he cannot get us. I've got so much I want to say tonight in just a little time to say it. Let me hasten on. He passed. Jesus passed through the uh, stratospheric heavens. Uh, the outer court. He passed through the immense universe, the holy place. He entered into the third heaven, the holy of holies. The Bible declares in Ephesians that the heavens, uh, the heavenlies, are the principalities and powers, the innumerable company of angels. So their dwelling place is in the heavenlies. Now God made these angels and He gave them these mysterious bodies, and then assigned them their habitation. What and where are their habitations? Now, 
You know that prayer Jesus said, when you pray, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. One of these days, friend, it's going to be just like he said pray. That prayer has been bottled up for a long time, but it's going to come to pass one glorious day. Now these are mainly in heaven doing God's will. The good angels are in heaven doing God's will. But now are they outside of the third heaven? Are there any outside the starry heaven? That's something that you need to meditate upon. The Lord of hosts is uh, the, the Lord of the stars and the angels. The host of heaven means for uh, both stars and angelic host. So we have the description of the fall of Lucifer that we read the other night in Isaiah 14. He possessed a throne. Lucifer possessed a throne. And his throne had been given to him by Almighty God. Lucifer wanted to, to move his kingdom somewhere else. He was not satisfied with his kingdom being where it was, so he wanted to move it. And of course, he wanted to move it to heaven, the third heaven, wherever he, and I'll show you where his kingdom was in a moment. But he had a kingdom. He was ruler. God gave him that as Lucifer before he became the devil, and he had his own kingdom. But he wasn't satisfied with that. He wanted to exalt his kingdom above the stars and above the clouds into the very third heaven. In Isaiah 14, 13, he said, I will ascend into heaven. That's what Lucifer said. Now the third heaven is above the stars. A throne must have a locality. If a king has no kingdom over which to rule, how can he have a throne? Lucifer had a throne. And therefore he possessed an original dwelling place, a fixed place in the universe that God made. And he was assigned that place by God. God is God. No matter what Lucifer is, no matter who the devil is, brother, God is God. God made it all. So he said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. There's the key, I think. His kingdom was a place under the clouds. The clouds are next to us. Closest thing to us are, are the clouds that's above us. But he said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And it seems plain to me that Lucifer, in his unfallen condition, dwelt upon the earth. Science claims that the earth existed once in a different form than it is now. And I'm not going to argue with that. All right. They also claim that there are gigantic or were gigantic animal and vegetation creations. I won't even argue with that. But science has never proved that man lived here on this earth millions of years ago. Science can't prove that because it's not so. They agree that the earth itself is much older than 6,000 years. Science has never disproved the Bible in any way, in any area. They have argued the Bible. They have uh, said other things about the Bible and, and said uh, the Bible is a book of myths and all of that other stuff, but they can't prove what they say. Hallelujah. This Bible can prove it over and over and over again. It's the Word of God. The best proof I got, I used to be lost, hell bound. Now I'm heaven bound. The Bible told me how to be saved. I got saved. Brother, they can't prove a thing. I can prove what I'm talking about. And I don't have to have anything visible. I tell you, I've got faith. I know what I was before I got saved and how miserable I was and how hell bent I was. And when I asked Jesus to come into my heart, my heart was changed just like that. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to salvation. Salvation, I understand. So sometimes before man, before man was ever created, uh, there was a sudden there was a sudden, and a, uh, something happened uh, to the original creation. Uh, it wiped out a lot of things because it was a judgment of God. Death came, chaos and darkness prevailed. Genesis 1-2, the earth was without form and void. That word was in the Hebrew means, means the same thing as became. It became without form and void. So that was a dark, chaotic situation. Then the Holy Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, of the waters and among the face of that deep, chaotic situation. And so we, we have, and we hear differences, uh, different opinions about all of this. You, are, you have a right to have your own opinion. You can believe what you want about it. 
It, what we believe about these things has nothing to do with our salvation anyway. Jesus Christ is all that matters when it comes to salvation. But you've got to get that right. You've got to get that right. I keep emphasizing you've got to know Jesus to be saved. So Isaiah, Isaiah 45, 18, and I like to just let God speak and just see what he says. Listen, the Bible says, For thus saith the Lord, not scientist, not some philosopher, not some astronomer or astrologer, uh, astrology, uh, or any of those, but thus saith the Lord. So listen to what he said. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. He made them. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He cre created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. Now, when God, in the beginning, wherever that was, whenever it was, God created the heaven and the earth. Why did he create an earth? He wanted it to be inhabited. So he put something on this earth. That's why he created it. And he created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. And he said, I am the Lord, and there is none else. So argue all day long. I am the Lord. I said what happened, and that's the way it happened. Isaiah 45, 18. Now, what caused this earth to turn from beauty and order into shame and chaos? I believe this chaos and darkness was a result of Lucifer wanting his place, his throne moved to the third heaven. Lucifer lost his kingdom when he got uh, lifted up in pride and tried to outdo God and get his kingdom above God's kingdom. Then he lost his kingdom. Then, as I said a while ago, the Spirit of God moved again. Sometime God's Spirit moved, and God said, let there be light. And light came again. The light was turned on. It was like when, when Lucifer sinned and became the devil, the lights went out. And then when the Holy Ghost moved on the face of the deep, and God said, let there be lights, the lights were clicked back on. And order came out of chaos again. So the earth was restored. It was restored. And so, in a little while, God said, let us make man. Let us make man in our image. And of course, man was created by God and given dominion. Listen now. Man was given dominion over the whole earth. Man was the boss. Man was over Lucifer. He was over the devil, over Satan. Man had it all. He could tell the devil where to go, what to do, and what not to do, and de the devil would have to do whatever man said. Man owned the earth. God put him here and said, now you take care of it and fill it up. And God told man that he was in charge. Satan comes back. He's lost it. He's lost the earth. He's lost where he used to be. It's not his anymore, but he's mad. And he comes back. And he, Satan, formerly Lucifer, wants the earth back. All right, so Satan was the prince of the power of the air. He was a wandering star without a fixed habitation now. Satan was still a very powerful personality, and he started right off using his ungodly superpower to poison man's mind. Satan promised Eve, you shall be his gods. Oh, don't listen to God. Hath God said Oh, no, you shall not surely die. So the devil began to work on the woman's mind to get her to doubt God and to believe him and to act accordingly to the devil's uh, statements. And Eve, of course, did. Adam, with his eyes wide open, he did the same thing. And what Adam actually did when he sinned was to hand the devil the title to the earth. Here it is, Satan. You got it now. You wanted it, you got it. I'm giving it to you. Adam lost it. Isn't that a shame? He had everything. He was the boss over it all. God was uh, pleased with that. But, say, uh, but when Satan came back and wanted it and tricked Eve, deceived her, and Adam with his eyes wide open wanted to be with his wife, he loved her that much, and he handed the devil the deed. Now the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. He's got control over many, many people. You wonder why all this hell is going on in our world? The devil. He's got control of the majority of people. You and I better get up and say hallelujah. Praise God we're not in his mess. We're not owned by the devil. 
we're here on this earth and the devil's in charge of a lot, but praise God, not in charge of me. And you say, well, brother, you better watch out. Satan's greater than you are, but not greater than my Savior. Hallelujah. Jesus is greater than the low down devil. <laughs> so then this is important to me. Lucifer had a dwelling place in the atmosphere, and he holds to that right now, but he operates in the earth also. He goeth to and fro in the earth, the Bible says, and he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. If, he, if you'll let him, he'll, he'll destroy everything you got. If you'll let him get in your home, he'll destroy your home. Hey, if you'll let him disturb your peace, he'll disturb your peace. He can get everything you got but your salvation, and he can't get that. He cannot get that. Satan as a roaring lion walketh about, patiently walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Now, he wants to keep, <coughs> excuse me for this, he wants to keep this earth. He doesn't want to give it up. Boy, he's, he's got a lot of power in this earth tonight. A lot of folk are minding him. I want to turn over to Revelation for a minute. Revelation, and I want to read you something in chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and this, these are living creatures in heaven, and in the midst of the elders, we got the church in heaven, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. This doesn't mean seven in number, it means seven in perfection, in completeness. So, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Hey, prayers will be answered. Maybe not right now, but they will be answered. Every prayer you've ever prayed, God's got it bottled up. Amen. Once he can't answer and will not answer now, he'll answer them someday and you'll shout, you'll shout the house down. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God. Shows that that's you and me because angels weren't redeemed. We were. We were redeemed by the grace of God. And by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And huh, on the earth, that's the devil. Uh-uh. He just thinks it's his. Hey, it still belongs to Jesus. He's coming back to claim it. Yes, he is. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I say and blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and under the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever. Praise God, Jesus is going to come back. He's the only one that will be able to get the deed back to this earth. The devil has it right now, but Jesus is going to take it away from him. He's going to take the earth back. And then he's going to set up his kingdom on this earth. Jesus is. And then you and I are going to be rejoicing because we're going to be here to reign with him. 
It's going to be his kingdom. Hallelujah, it's coming. And I want you to know, my friend, no sinner who is unsaved can understand the greatness of this triumph. And no Christian can totally fathom the greatness of this Savior that we're talking about. We know him. We love him. We've been saved by his grace, but we just can't fathom the greatness of Jesus Christ. But we know much, and we learn more as we go along through the Word of God. Satan, sin, and sinners have made this world a place of misery, of woe, and of ruin. Satan is a ruler himself who deceives and discredits and dishonors and, and decays. Many of the following uh, people and things of this earth, they are following his ungodly leadership. You know they are. You can see it every time you put your TV on, every time you listen to the radio, every time you listen to anything, read anything secular, then you see how that people are following his leadership. But we can praise God, for in the fullness of the time, the great deliverer did come, according to Galatians 1, 13 and 14, and he's our kinsman redeemer, Jesus. He has conquered for us, and he will lead us safely home and give us our earth back. The earth is going to be yours and mine. The meek shall inherit the earth. You and I are not weak, but we're meek. And we were made meek by his grace. That's one of the Beatitudes, and we're studying that in Sunday school on Sunday morning right now. John saw the Lamb as he steps forward and takes that book from the Father's hand. And there's no sign of force or disagreement or argument on their part. God the Father was willing to give that to his Son. In John 10, 30, the Bible says, I and my Father are one. Now the Father is seeing his own great will fulfilled again in his great Son. And I'm going to just kind of read something in right here. I believe when the Father handed the Son that book with the seals on it, he probably said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now I read that into that. I just said it, thought about it, you know. He might have said, he might say that when that takes place. Jesus is still performing the Father's will. That's all he's ever done. And we are also reminded of what Jesus told his disciples before he left them in Matthew 28, 18. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So we have the power on this in heaven and also that heavenly power in this earth. And this is how we get things accomplished even now. The Holy Spirit of God indwells us. We couldn't do a thing without the Holy Spirit. We couldn't do a thing without the Word of God. The Word of God shows us and the Holy Spirit enables us to do what we have to do. How do we carry on? Week after week after week, year after year after year. And the devil fighting us all the time. And problems every way we turn. Trials and tests and sorrows and tears misunderstandings, all kinds of things come to the Christian. But we still go on. Hey, we still got joy, joy, joy down deep in our heart, haven't we? I mean, you're still happy, aren't you? Amen. I mean, you're not at the end of your road, are you? Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is indwelling us all the time. He operates freely as He desires without opposition from anybody, he is certainly the summit of authority, Jesus Christ our Savior. So, he is the most majestic of all the personalities in the universe. And no wonder he is such a Savior as this, that can take a sinner. And you know what I like? Uh, it's such a sin to abort a baby. You know, that's a terrible sin. That's murder. You know, that's murder. And you know, doctors and mothers and fathers who allow that and do that, they're going to answer to God for that. But you know what? One thing I got to shout about when a baby's aborted, he's going to stand one day in heaven and praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Every one of those little millions of babies that have been killed went to heaven. That's right. Hey, glory. That may have been the only way they could have gotten there. Because, hey, if they'd have been raised with some of these stupid parents, they'd probably go to hell. Because parents don't know how to raise children. Many of them don't. They don't want to raise them for God. They'd rather make money down here and drink their liquor and have their parties and live in sin. Let their children go to hell. That's the way many parents are today. But hey, listen, it's a sin to abort a baby and they'll answer for it. But in, uh, in the long run, those babies will be shouting on the hills of glory. 
with all the other saints of God. Matthew 6 tells us that thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What's going on in heaven right now? Everything's right. Everything's right in heaven. There's no sin there. There's nobody grumbling and griping and fussing and fighting in heaven. It's clean and holy, and we want that on earth. We want our earth back, Satan, and we're going to get it. If you're sitting around Satan right now listening to this preacher, you're doomed and we're going to get this earth. You're not going to rule on this earth. You're going to hell and we're going to heaven and we're going to have be able to occupy this earth. We're going to be able to come back and forth from heaven to this earth. It's going to be ours. Jesus, our Savior, our kinsman redeemer, with the nail scars in his hand and the feet uh, scarred as they were, and the scar in his side from the spear, and all these things, uh, he is going to be the overcomer for all of us. And we'll all be so elated that we'll fall down before him gladly and praise his name. We will be singing and shouting and praising him because he's worthy. He had the power and the majesty that nobody in heaven, earth, or hell had. Satan is powerful, but he cannot compare with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise his holy name. I'll read this one and I'll quit. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Hallelujah. Jesus is receiving all that because he was willing to come and die and was buried and arose again. And, you know, next Sunday is Easter. By the way, we just have one service next Sunday, not Sunday night, just Sunday morning. So be sure and be here for Sunday school and Sunday uh, for the preaching and uh, be here Wednesday night, of course. Uh, but then next Sunday night, we won't be here. But you know, we have a wonderful Savior, church. Amen. We have a Savior that is infallible and Satan is going to be defeated. You wait and see. You wait and see. Let's stand our feet. And if anybody here doesn't belong to Christ and you'd like to, we invite you to come and give your heart to Jesus Christ and be saved. You can be saved as easy as anybody else. And we want you to. If you're by streaming and you're not saved, you want to be saved, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Invite him into your heart by faith, and he'll save you. Father, in Jesus' name tonight, we thank you for the promises we have. We thank you, Lord, for what we know that's going to happen. Father, the world doesn't have an idea of what's happening and what is going to happen. They're in the dark still. But I pray that some will hear the word, come to the Lord, come to the light, where they'll be able to see what is going to take place. Lord Jesus, until these things actually come to fruition, I pray that our faith will remain strong in thee. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.